Good morning, everybody. Jim Hoffman here, pastor at St. John's United Methodist Church. It is Friday. It is time for our daily devotion, so I want to invite you to come and join me. Let's take a moment to pause and center ourselves on God's presence in our lives today. So I'm looking forward to sharing in this moment with you. Come and join me if you would, please. We're going to take a time to focus on some scripture reading, some prayer, devotion, all those kinds of things. As you find us on Facebook, leave a quick comment and say hello. It is always nice to see who stops uh, by and who joins us for our devotion time. If you are someone that watches this at another time, say you watch it later on today or another day of the week, don't forget to leave your comments as well. Always nice to see who stops by. Hi, Barbara and Chris. Good morning to the two of you. Just going to watch Facebook for a moment just to see who says good morning. Let's me know who all joins. Hi, Stacy. Good morning to you. Glad to see you here today. So we're going to be reading out of Job. Job chapter 28. So if you want to find Job chapter 28, that is where we're reading today. The story of Job chapter 28. We're going to begin in verse 20. Well, hello, Rosie. I bet you're having a good time with your grandma. Job chapter 28, verses 20 to 28. Okay, here's our opening prayer. We're going to go ahead and get started. O oh God, by your spoken word, you created everything that is. By your incarnate word, you redeemed us. By your comforting word, you are with us still. Prepare us now to hear your word to us this day. Amen. All right, Job chapter 28, verses 20 to 28 reads, Where then does wisdom come from, and where is the place of understanding? Is it hidden from the eyes of all living and concealed from the birds of the air? Abandon and death say, We have... Not, we have Abd Abdon and death say. We have heard a rumor of it with our ears. God understands the way to it, and he knows its place. For he looks to the ends of the earth and sees everything under the heavens. When he gave to the wind its weight, and a portion to the waters by measure, when he made a decree for the rain and a way for the thunderbolt, then he saw it and declared it. He established it and searched it out. He, and he said to humankind, Truly the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. Our devotion writer today is Chris Baldoff. Chris is from Louisiana. His focus verse is from Jeremiah 29, verse 11, which reads, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. They are plans for peace, not disaster, to give you a future filled with hope. Here is Chris's devotion for today. Most days when I get up, I grab a cup of coffee, my Bible, and my journal. Journaling my prayers and thoughts in a spiral notebook has become my habit. I like to start the page with the day, date, and year. This helps me organize my day and allows me to look back to see what I was thinking or how God worked through my prayers. I realize my desires are not always in line with the Creator's will. 
I become intentional about asking God questions, stating my concerns in the form of a question instead of asking, instead of always asking for help or blessing to do what I have in mind the way I look at my day. It's a subtle shift in attitude that makes it feel less stressful when things don't happen as I envision. Questions make my prayers open-ended, allowing my mind to receive the gift of grace instead of see trying to seize it. This practice leaves an open window for the Holy Spirit to flow through my day. Thought for the day is, I will not be afraid to ask God questions. You know, it's an interesting perspective to think about your prayer life. You know, if, you, if you think about what you do when you pray, how much of your prayer life is statements? And how much of your prayer life might be just some simple questions? God, what does the future hold? God, what does today look like for me? God, where are you moving in the world around me? And how can I be involved in those things? God, would you please open my eyes today? You know, asking more questions about things. Um, God, why is it that I feel stressed in the moment when I have faith in you? You know, just maybe those some thing, are some things that will help your mind and your heart and your soul begin to just kind of wrestle a little bit. But but maybe be more open and present also to the answers of God. We have a tendency to think of it this way. Um, statements don't necessarily need answers. Statements are just like, this is what I want. God, today I want health. God, today I want. God, today I need. God, I'm looking for. We make statements. It doesn't literally leave much room for a more in-depth conversation. But rather, questions do. Think about human connection with other people and how often questions begin a conversation and then you just ask more questions and how much more you learn and how much more you, you, you begin to wrap your head around some things and see new possibilities and understand things differently because of those questions. I think it's better off maybe that we should maybe amend part of our prayer life. Our thanksgiving doesn't have to be a question. It's a statement. But when it comes to the relationship that you have with your Creator, I wonder if statements might better serve you in the way in which you pray. And it might be you write those down in your journal and, or something like that, and those become your, your focuses. It might be that you uh, have a piece of paper handy. It might be that they just kind of roll off the tongue. Uh, it doesn't really matter, but I think in many ways questions make much better open-ended prayers uh, and allow for that conversation with God than our statements. So let's take a moment to pray. Loving God, thank you for this day and the lessons you provide for us in Scripture. We welcome your guidance and teach us what it means to ask more questions in our prayers than statements. And we ask this in Christ. Amen. Well, thanks, friends, for being here today. By the way, good morning, Susan. Great to see you today. Hello, Jack. Great to see you. I'm hoping Pat's with you. Um, come and join us again tomorrow for devotions, friends. Uh, and as we close this moment, if you would like, feel free to share this on your own Facebook page. Maybe one of your family and friends will join us for our devotion time. Again, for those of you that watch us later on, don't forget, leave a quick comment and say hello. Take a moment to pause and pray for one another. I am praying for you. I hope you'll take a moment to pause and pray for me. And as I said, come and join us again tomorrow for our devotion time. I'll look forward to seeing you then. Can't wait. Otherwise, I hope you enjoy the rest of your Friday. May it be blessed with God's grace and peace. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Thanks, friends.